I chose to review The Gold Rush, a movie that was originally released in late June of 1925, both written and directed by Charles Chaplin. It is said the idea first came to Chaplin to make the film when he was viewing pictures of prospectors hiking up the Chilkoot Pass, as well as reading about the Donner Party disaster of 1846, in which people were forced into cannibalism, as well as eating their own moccasins in order to survive while being snowed in in Nevada. Although the source for the film might have been pretty dark and rather intense, the film put a lightning, humorous twist on what can even be the darkest of situations. The film's plot consists of Charles Chaplin as a little tramp going into the Klondike and hoping of finding gold. And it's pretty interesting right off the bat as you see all these very masculine, manly, tough gold miners. And then along comes the little tramp with his cane and his top hat ready to go out there and join them. But uh, along his journey, it doesn't go as expected, as you know one would think. And a storm comes along and forces him into a cabin along with a successful prospector who just struck gold, played by Mark Swain, and a criminal on the run, played by Tom Murray, in a very humorous fashion they are forced into this cabin as well. So as the men attempt to ride out the storm, they become in a very desperate need of food, and they decide to draw cards in order to decide who's going to have to go out into the storm and retrieve it for them. So they draw cards, and Tom Murray, the criminal, draws the low card and is the one that has to go out and get it. But once he goes, he never ends up returning to the cabin. Ironically, the cabin was his in the first place, so it was rather interesting that he never ended up returning. But at this point, Charles Chaplin and Mark Swain have to resort to eating Chaplin's boot in relation to the inspiration of, for the Donner Party. So they're both going very hungry, and Swain begins to see Chaplin as a chicken on and off, and he gets the urges to try to eat him. But this food issue is eventually solved as Chaplin shoots an invading bear. So Chaplin shoots this invading bear in a very humorous fashion, and the film continues as the little tramp continues his journey into a little town where he meets Georgia, played by Georgia Hale, along with her little posse of friends and the town ladies' man, Jack. Interestingly enough, though, the role of Georgia was originally supposed to be played by Lalita McMurray, but she found out she was pregnant with Chaplin's child six months into filming after, as they had been having an affair. This caused filming to stop for three months until the replacement, Georgia Hale, was put in the cast. Once again, as many of his films go, Chaplin finds himself in a real whirlwind of a situation, consisting of a love triangle between himself, Jack, whose character is not the kindest Chaplin in this film, and Georgia, Chaplin's love in the film. This film is one of Chaplin's most famous for many reasons, one of which is the classic dancing dinner roll scene. His eventful relationship with Jack, Georgia, and George's friends leads to the plans made for a dinner party for the little tramp. Georgia and her friends take place on New Year's Eve. The days leading up to New Year's Eve, the little tramp works tirelessly and comedically all around towns to provide the best experience for his love and her friends come the big night. But as the evening comes and passes, Georgia and her friends choose to spend it with Jack at the tavern celebrating the new year instead of with the little tramp. As the little tramp sits in, at the dinner table, awaiting just to be stood up, he begins to imagine all the glorious things that could have become of that night, one of which included himself doing his famous dancing dinner roll routine to impress all the ladies in attendance. As the plot comes to a boiling point and the intensity of the situation rises, the successful prospector from the cabin from earlier in the film once again returns to the little town and needs Chaplin's help to find his gold. After enduring a couple more pretty life-threatening but very comedic situations, the two finally locate his gold and become millionaires. When the film is wrapping up, Little Tramp is doing some reflecting and realizes he has it all, everything he could have ever wanted, except for the one thing in which he longed for most, his true love. But yet again, by another serious, unexplainable, com comedic, spontaneous twist of the plot, Georgia ends back up in Chaplin's arms to end the film. Chaplin puts a delightful twist on even some of the darkest times from history. His classic humor, along with dramatic fashion and need for perfection, were very evident in this film. 
It can be related to many films today in the sense that the less manly of characters ends up with the girl. And a lot of the happy endings for today's comedy movies, the unsuspecting main character comes out on top, providing a lot of laughs along the way.